All right, guys. Woke up this morning to a total mess here at the sawmill. Let me show you what's going on. So I came outside this morning to take Bruno to school. And look what I found laying in the yard. A big old piece of black metal. Now it gets better. There's another piece laying right over there. And both of them came off of, you guessed it, the kiln right there in the middle. Look over the background noise, friends. There's been helicopters all morning flying over for some reason, military helicopters. Non-stop today, more than usual. So I woke up this morning, like I said, I come out here and saw this metal line on the ground. We had some terrible storms on uh, Wednesday and Thursday of last week based off that hurricane down in the Gulf. And we had some terrible winds from that over the weekend as well. And last night it got pretty crazy out here. And I come out this morning and looky there. Metal laying everywhere, just part of it, guys. And there's a reason that came off, and I'll explain that when we get on the roof of the kiln. So let's jump in the tractor and go dump this sawdust in the burn pile. A bunch of walnut and hemlock in there. Can't do much with it. We'll throw the pallet forts on and put that metal back on top of the roof and get it connected and then get to something else. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. It's going to be Monday all day today, let me tell you. I come out this morning, not only does the metal roofing flying off, but now i got a problem with my boots. These boots I'm wearing, I had them on about a month ago, left them outside, and some tomcat came through here marking a scent and sprayed them so they stunk. Had to get those things cleaned up and buy some special $20 spray to put on them. So today I'm wearing them for the first time and guess what happens? I walk over to the metal roof and I start picking it up and I step in a big old pile of you know what. So it's just, it's just all day today guys, all day. It's already 12 o'clock. I've stepped in dog crap. I've cleaned my boots up twice. I've got metal roofing laying on the ground. Had to go to the hardware store to buy some fasteners because I didn't have any of the screws to reattach the metal. And, uh, and the wind's getting worse out here. It's gonna be just not a good day, guys, I'm telling you. Just one of those days. And I was gonna do the burn pile today as well, but based on the wind, it's probably not a good idea either. But at least, at least, I'm in this tractor out of the wind in this cab. Now I mentioned on this channel how much I like this cab tractor. If I haven't, I'm mentioning it now. It's kind of warm in here. friends on top of the kiln look over the wind noise here's why that metal came off and i'm going to fix this sooner than later probably the osb sheathing right here and metal roofing in the osb sheathing has a hard time gripping i should have put plywood up here when i built this thing but i know now next time i do it to put plywood on it what i'll probably do is maybe come this spring if i can get this metal to hang on that long is take all the metal off and probably go ahead and get some one by tens or probably three quarter by 10 pine, probably saw some up and dry them and put them on top of this here OSB for sheathing and then screw the metal down into it. And that's the problem with OSB. When you put a screw into it, it kind of tears out and just reams itself out on the first go. All right, friends, back out here at the mill. Tool poplar. And the reason I'm showing you guys this log is because the last time I done a poplar, I had a few people email me and they were kind of upset they didn't get to see the grain or the color of the boards. 
So this is the next one in queue as far as stuff going on the mill and I thought I'd show it to you guys today. This is a good size one. It's about nine feet long. The diameter is about 22 inches on the operator side and the far end it's 24 inches. I'll use my tow boards here in just a minute and raise this up about two or three inches so we get a nice flat face on the top cut here. But before we get going guys, we'll go over two quick things here. Number one, it's something new here at the sawmill. Now, Matt Morgan over in Outdoors at the Morgans, if you watch his channel, he recommended this the other day. And I went and bought one. I use a squirt bottle here for the ATF to get, put on the guide rails and all the chains and stuff like that. That's what Woodmizer recommends. That's worked fine over the years, but you do have some overspray, which isn't a big deal because sawdust is falling constantly on this sawmill and it dries it up so you don't have a mess left over or nothing like that. But you do lose a little bit of the ATF because you got some overspray going on. So he recommended this and it works pretty good guys. I'll put some footage in here and show you guys what I'm talking about. As far as putting it where you want it, you can't beat it. And this is on Amazon. I'll leave an affiliate link down below. It was about 20 some dollars or something like that. It's made by Golden Rod in the USA. And this right here is right out, let me see a pint. And that's more than enough to lubricate this sawmill. You want to put ATF on your bed rails. I do it every time I saw. The chain coming down through here that guides the head. Also on your poles right here, the mass that holds up the motor. I also put it on there as well. It's just a good idea to do it. And on the LT35, it was a little bit different. It only had one mass on it. This one has two, but I'd always lubricate it real good. And there's also a chain in there as well that drives the motor, sends the head up and down. That's very important to put this on here also. So item number two is another YouTube channel. I'm gonna butcher this guy's name, Mark Delisi, 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 I can't even pronounce it right. Mark Delisi, I think's how you pronounce it. He's up north, he runs a circle sawmill, and it's a great YouTube channel, guys. If you wanna watch another sawmill run, more importantly, a circle sawmill, go check out his channel. I'll leave a link down below to it. He's probably one of my, probably one of my top two or three favorite YouTube channels to watch. And something interesting about his channel, he'll put a log on there and he'll go start sawing up with that circle mill. And he's in a cab, you know, with glass around it, doing the operation controls on that mill. And therefore, he can talk to you guys while he's sawing. I'm gonna try that maybe tomorrow. I'm gonna wear a microphone back here while I'm sawing and see if it comes through okay. It may be too loud in here, I don't know. So go check that out, there's a link down below and you'll be glad you did, it's a really good channel. So this poplar, we'll be sawing this into uh, one and seven eighths on the thickness and nine and a half inches on the width. This is going to the Axe House in downtown Kingsport. If I get this done in time today before school gets out, I gotta pick up Bruno at three o'clock. We'll go ahead and run this down here to Paul and get it delivered. On the end over here, this poplar does have about four major checks going on. Two of them are going right through it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Kind of hard to overlook these. This poplar's been on the ground for about five weeks. It was sawed by a buddy of mine. He brought it over here with about three other ones. I anchor sealed this timber the day it came in. He brought it over here within two hours of cutting it. And as you can see, sometimes anchor seal cannot prevent checks from happening. There's probably a lot of stress going on in here. This tree was probably maybe leaning a little bit. I don't know. There's a, just a, that's just really bad right there. And it's a perfect check right through the pith down the middle, coming this way into the juvenile wood. Just a, a nasty check right there. So let's get going guys, we're wasting daylight here.
Friends, I had to stop there for a few minutes and bring me a cup of coffee. Let me explain what's going on here. I've never talked about this much on the channel. Kind of give you guys an insight on what I'm thinking about what I'm sawing here. So our finished dimensions need to be an inch and seven eighths. That's not really important right now, but the width is nine and a half. And what I did, I came down and made two of those cuts for the, for the inch and seven eighths, you know, and I went ahead and put those aside. We'll edge those later to get our nine and a half inches. And I'll be left with probably some two by sixes after I do that, I can use that on the barn, so that's good. So we made two cuts, I came down right here and I stopped. I'm now gonna flip this 180 degrees and here's why. You're always sawing out of the heart of the tree right here. You wanna keep that centered if you're doing dimensional lumber. And this is kinda of like dimensional lumber right here. You wanna keep them kind of like you would two by eights or two by tens. You want that pith in the middle on a slab if you can do it and the rest of it kind of centered around that. That way everything dries better and it stays more, uh, I guess what's the best word? It stays more stable. You know, it doesn't move a whole lot. Now if I was to keep on coming down, making my cuts till I get to nine and a half inches, which is what my target is. I want to get this middle worked down to nine and a half inches. Then I can flip it up and come on down and have finished cuts at that point. That's fewer cuts. If I keep on coming down right here till I get to nine and a half, it's really gonna screw me over right there with my lumber and more so it's gonna screw over the customer. So when you look at this, nine and a half is about an inch above the pith right here. If you're new to this channel, the pith is the center of the tree, the heart of the tree right there and the juvenile wood around it. Now if I do that, here's what the problem would be. I would stop right there, I would flip this thing up and saw straight down. Now the first few cuts will be okay, kind of riff sawn, but when it gets closer down to the pith right here in this juvenile wood, which is usually the first five to 15 years of growth of a tree is the juvenile wood. That's reaction wood, tons of stress in there. It's not very good stuff. You want to keep that centered. So when I come down and get to that point right there, all these boards around the juvenile wood would develop a natural crook in them as they dry, even though this stuff's gonna be used within probably one or two weekends. You know, he used these for axe targets. They won't last very long. But I don't wanna send something out of here I'm not proud of. So if I did that, these boards right here, every one of them would have the juvenile wood on the edge right here. And something else to remember, juvenile wood will shrink in its length. So, you know, the heartwood of this tree you know, the outside cuts right here doesn't really shrink that much in the length of it, less than 1%. The juvenile wood will shrink between 1% and 3%. When you think about it, when you got your board right here in front of us and the end of it right here, just kind of bear with me here, has the juvenile wood coming down, it's going to shrink, you know, up to 3%. And when it does that, it's going to draw the board in, you know, and make a crook in it like that. And I hope that makes a lot of sense. I'm sitting here making imaginary lines. That's why you want that in the very middle. So if it's in the middle of all these boards or the boards closer to the juvenile wood, it's not going, you're not gonna have a terrible crown in it. And that's what causes a really bad crown in lumber is when you have the heart, like these little, uh, you know, you got two by fours at Lowe's and places. And you'll look on the end grain, sometimes the heart on two by sixes will be on the very end. Well, that end right there will have a, a huge crown on the other side because it's going to shrink in, you know, in its length. It's really going to make a bad bow right there. So you're always working around the heart. And I hope that was as clear as mud. It made a lot of sense to you guys. That's about the best way I can explain it. So stick here with me guys. We're going to knock this one out and uh, take a little field trip.
Yes, I'd do it all again Sir, I wouldn't change a thing All these years I thought that I had lived But I had And now I've got the best of friends These are the best times of our lives Picking tunes and getting stoned One day our kids are gonna pass us on by And we'll be packed away on a shelf and long gone Well, times is tough 